We need order. Thank you all very much. We will hear the pledges of each delegation. We begin with the United States of America. Please welcome to the podium the President of the United States, the Honorable Donald J. Trump. We will continue to walk away from these agreements if we are not matched at least by the EU, China, and India. So everything In case you weren't paying attention, that's not the real Donald Trump. No. She's a business school student from MIT's Sloan School of Management, participating in World Climate, a role-playing game created by an environmental nonprofit that simulates how international climate policy gets made. Basically, it's Model UN with an eco twist. What is the purpose of this? Research shows that showing people research doesn't work. Corporate leaders are used to these boring briefings about what they could do differently, what should their strategy be, blah, 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 and it doesn't change anybody's mind. It is my privilege to introduce the Secretary General of If the you're Nation. learning to fly an F-15, you learn in a simulator before you get in the real thing. Let us begin. You must reach an agreement, each nation pledging whatever it believes it can do that will collectively reduce greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere to limit the expected warming to no more than two degrees and striving for 1.5. You have no food, you have no clean water, you need infrastructure. Along with nation states, some participants play the role of lobbyists from environmental and fossil fuel sectors. And like actual UN deliberations, things quickly descend into chaos. No, we don't need your money. You don't want to decrease your growth. You only want to increase your growth. That's why we are willing to help you. She's very helpful. We are really we need to partner. Fossil fuel aren't going to Is there is there like an Antifa group around here that we could commission to help us? Yeah. I am an avid environmentalist and I live my life every single day trying to shift the needle on this particular issue. So my personal philosophy is that I'm gonna go down fighting and smiling. You're still gonna go down. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know, but it, we will certainly go down if I don't try. What we've seen in prior sessions, they absolutely see this as a material issue that affects their businesses. And many of our alumni are out there taking action. Some of them have changed their careers to focus on this issue. After a lot of yelling and bargaining, each country announces their pledges, and the fake UN Secretary General enters them into a climate model to see how hot the world will be in 2100. China. Are you willing to do more? China is willing to do more. China's feeling benevolent today. <laughs> <laughs> if the U.S. will match us, we agree to start reductions in 2040 at a rate of 5%. And so as a country that has pulled out of Paris yeah. and is not even sure that the science is real. It's not real. It's not real, but you're willing to yeah. play this game. I'm willing to play the game. And what, about the, doing what about the economic impact of this? Nobody seems to be talking about this, by so the way. We this is the most fucking pie in the sky. Like, well, it's, you know. It's a simulation in Cambridge, man. I know. <laughs> this may just be simulation, but it does resemble actual UN deliberations in a significant way. Like the fake pledges made by these MBA students, all of the real pledges made by nations in the Paris Agreement are non-binding, meaning they're just promises that countries can choose to follow or not. And given that global emissions are still on the rise this year, some of those promises have been broken. Am I wrong to be this pessimistic after seeing that? Because I see these adjustments, it's very easy to adjust these sliders on a, on a laptop, and very hard to implement some of this stuff. So first of all, you saw a mix in the room, right? Some people came out, especially if they didn't know a lot about the issue before, they see how little time is left to really bend the curve. That's a really daunting problem. But here's the good news. We don't need a technological miracle to do it. We can do it with an ensemble of policies, all of which are entirely compatible with democratic institutions and the free market, and collectively, we can still make a difference on this problem. Congratulations, you've created a much safer world for yourselves and your children. 